So cinema's dead. Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey, remember that gem from last year? It made over $5 million. Might not seem like much, that's a pretty meager figure, $5 million, a little over that, I guess. But when the movie only costs $100,000 to make, that's a pretty good payday at the end of the day. That's a very good payday. That movie made more money than The Flash. That movie made more than The Marvels. That movie made more than a lot of big budget films that came out last year. Because those movies actually lost money in the long run. These guys were wise. This studio was smart. They put almost no money into this and absolutely zero effort into the script or the costumes or the setting or really anything at all. And they came out on the other side all the better for it. In fact, they have several more movies announced culminating into a brand new Puniverse. Kill me. Let's talk about it. When I first heard the news, there was going to be a Winnie the Pooh R-rated film set at 100 Acre Woods featuring a bloodthirsty Pooh and Piglet going on a killing spree, rated R, very violent. I thought, this is awesome. This is odd. The child inside of me said, I can't wait. This is going to be fantastic. And then I found out that it was coming out in like a week. After it was only on the table for a few months, essentially the rights to the character was not renewed. So this company scooped in, picked it up, and they shat out a movie in less than like a month. I think they filmed the whole thing in less than 30 days. And you can tell. And you can tell. But humans are curious cats. We're curious creatures. We want to see what the hubbub is about. And there was some decent marketing online. There was some good guerrilla campaign stuff going on. I think it harkens back to snakes on a plane. If you remember that old chestnut from it feels like a thousand years ago. But I mean, it's been a long time since that movie came out. But that was really heavily marketed online. And that movie was about as about as shitty as Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. I, I, I think it's maybe better, but still not great. I don't think anybody ever talks about it. I think I'm the first person to talk about snakes on a plane in probably 15 years. And that movie might not even be 15 years old. That's what makes it so crazy. I have to imagine that somewhere, somehow, a person has deluded themselves into thinking this is going to be anything short of hot trash. The production studio, the people working on these films might be excited because it's a good payday. To me, though, this is just kind of sad. It kind of sucks. Because there was actually a potential good thing that could have been made out of this. An R-rated Winnie the Pooh film could have been really fun. You set it at 100 Acre Woods, which they did, but maybe make it colorful like the show, but full of violence. Maybe instead of a jar of honey, it's a jar of blood. May, you know, use some puns, play off the characters more with Eeyore and Rabbit and Tigger and, and just have freaking fun with this thing. Get creative. But instead, no, it was like this most generic, by the book, bullshit, low budget, low effort thing you could possibly come up with where it's just these budget dollar store masks with these guys going around killing a bunch of teens. It was so boring. And you could have replaced those masks with literally anything else and it wouldn't have made a fucking difference. So what can we expect from the Puniverse? Well, it's coming out in 2025, friends. That's right. And there's gonna be several movies shot out of a cannon in between that. Just, just in the next year, we're going to get like four more of these shit movies. There's Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. Couldn't even be bothered to go. Oh, bother, right? Coming up with something more creative in the title. Why not Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, Piglet Rises? Or Eeyore's Revenge? Or Winnie the Pooh, Blood, Honey, Sex, and Drugs? Go for broke. Get creative with this. Have some fun. Because right now, all I'm seeing is a bunch of properties they scooped up and they're just going to churn and burn low effort scripts and even more low effort shoddy production values. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they, they will. I will say the trailer for Pooh 2, Blood and Honey 2, um, it looks better. It looks higher quality. It looks like they put $20 into the masks this time instead of nothing you know i said it costs a hundred thousand to make i think that includes the marketing i'm pretty sure this thing was only fifty thousand to make and then you know you double it for marketing ventures and whatnot but regardless it, it costs very little to make that film and what we have on the horizon is a whole lot of awful we have a tinkerbell film we have bambi we have pinocchio 
Unstrung. That's a good title, I will say. Pinocchio Unstrung, I appreciate that. Peter Pan is in the mix, and the Mad Hatter. These are the characters. This is the rogues gallery of offerings. We're gonna see join forces to kill a bunch of, I guess, the survivors of their films, along with unsuspecting new victims, in a celebratory, I guess, uh, Avengers for a new generation. A generation that hates movies. Now, is it possible this won't be all doom and gloom and they could turn the corner and maybe just poo one was a litmus test, a way for them to get their feet wet, see if anything sticks from a honey perspective? Obviously it did. Now they have a much larger budget. They got uh, toys they can play with. They got more money at their disposal. Maybe they will make poo two the one that they envisioned all along in that 28 day shoot or whatever the hell it was. Maybe they will punch up the script and have some fun with this thing and go for broke this time. I can't imagine that's the case. And judging by the poster they released, it looks like it's going to be a whole lot of awful. Whole lot of miserable stuff going on. I think what annoys the shit out of me about this is I know they can do better. I know all these people can do better. There's clearly some talent there. It's just not being utilized or they're just not putting in a effort because they want to get this out to market. They want to cash in on this investment in the best way possible, which means putting very little into it to begin with and seeing if they can get that output they want. And we gave it to them. We encouraged them. They got their money. And now I guess we'll see if they will do right this time. If they won't pull the wool over our head, if they will say, you know what, let's give these guys a poo for the ages. Let's give them something they'll remember. And that, you know, I was at the health club uh, last week and the, one of the trainers knows me and he came up and he said, Adam, I got to ask you, have you seen the Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey? And I turned, I said, yeah, I saw it in theaters. And he goes, what'd you think? I said, it was terrible. And he goes, okay, yes, I thought it was awful. And you know, this isn't like a movie critic or a big movie buff. He's just a guy that likes watching movies. And so he checked it out because it was free on one of the streaming apps. And he, he thought the same thing everyone else did. Maybe it'll be this clever, fun, playful thing that's going to, you know, really run with the IP and do some creative stuff. No, it was just terrible. And uh, I look at like SNL and what they did with a couple minute sketch years ago with Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Bambi, but it was playing out Fast and the Furious. That was freaking hilarious. Dwayne is Bambi. He's got like a cigar, double guns. You got Vin Diesel in there as the skunk character. I don't remember the name. But uh, yeah, it was just really hilarious stuff. And they did it much better in just a few short minutes. That's how you make it work. We could have a Mad Hatter movie that's kind of like a Riddler character. He leaves clues and he pulls these people, these victims down the rabbit hole that Alice went in and to the magical fantasy world. So these characters have to figure out how to get to him using the clues. It would almost be like Saw. He's a Jigsaw type character. That would be awesome. There's no way they're going to do that. Pinocchio seems like a no-brainer. You just follow Child's Place formula or Megan. I'm a real boy trapped inside of this wooden doll, except for that real boy wants to kill and kill he does. No strings on him. He's off on his own. I like it. I mean, and make his weapon just scissors. Make it some household items. And then there's the nose. Every time he lies, it gets longer, but that's a weapon for him. He just keeps lying over and over. <laughs> Pulls it off, through the head of a guy. Maybe that's the final kill on Geppetto. He takes off the nose and smashes it right through his skull. That would be awesome. Peter Pan could be sweet if he hoodwinked individual young children to go to his fantasy world, but it's basically hell on earth. Neverland is just the worst. It's basically the underworld. But he hangs out with the kids at night in their rooms. It's like. Hey, you want to fly around with me, Wendy? Come on, we're going to go on an adventure. And then Wendy soon realizes that she's headed straight to her death. If we can have four or five Sharknado movies, of course we can do the Pooniverse. Of course. What's more depressing is, since I hate myself so much, I will obviously be there to watch these movies. I think Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2 comes out in like a week. What a sad choice to live my one life here on Earth than to go to these... Pooniverse movies. Certainly got the poo part right. I want to hear from you though. Are you excited? Did you love the first one? Did you think it was campy fun in all the right ways? Or are you like me and you just think this is garbage? We're, we're, they're putting out garbage. 
and they're gonna make back their money because people are sick and twisted in the head enough to convince themselves that it's worth their time in the theaters. Again, like myself. Please subscribe if you haven't. I should have called to action that at the beginning of the video. That's what you're supposed to do, but I'm putting it out at the end. I'm putting it right now for you. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a video and even hit that notification bell so these propagate in your feed appropriately. Otherwise, you just don't know what's happening. You have no idea. It's up to YouTube and not up to you. And at the end of the day, it should be your choice, not theirs. All right, that's all I have. Puniverse, it's coming, baby. Please be excited, right? Please, please be on board with this. What a, what a sad existence we live here on Earth. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully I see you next time.